Hey, welcome back to part two of the What Exactly Is a Container mini-series. Now, it would be a little bit strange to have a series on containers and not bring up the elephant in the room that is virtual machines. So I get the question all the time, what's the main differences between a virtual machine and a container? So I just wanted to have a quick video that addresses these differences before we get into actually building container images. Okay, containers versus virtual machines. So like I just mentioned, I get this question all the time. And I guess that's fair because there are a lot of similarities between the two, but overall I would say that they're pretty different. And as always, each have their own use cases. So let's quickly go through some of those primary differences now. So firstly, as we talked about in the last video, containers make very efficient use of the infrastructure that they're running on. In the last video, we saw some ballpark figures for the overhead of a container running uh, that very basic Hello World web app. Comparing that container to a VM isn't exactly apples to apples. So you may have picked up the stats I showed were just for the app and excluded the resources of the host OS, but that isn't that misleading because a lot of the efficiencies with containerization come from the number of kernels that are required when running multiple containers, which is just one. One kernel to host six apps in this case. Compare this to the VM stack on the right, where you can see four kernels, the hypervisor and three guest OSs, all on the same infrastructure and obviously, all those OSs take up resources that ultimately result in the host only having capacity to host three apps. Now, is it beneficial to run only one kernel? That might seem like a dumb question, and for the most part, I would probably say what you would expect, which is yes. Being able to securely share core system components in that host OS layer between the different applications significantly reduces the redundant overheads and duplication, where you would typically see very little value in the OS. So this is all pretty awesome in my opinion, but as always, it depends somewhat on the use case. So whilst I would always look to containers first, when deploying a new application, there may be some situations where a VM is required. VMs work by emulation. So the abstraction of a hypervisor layer, virtualizing those hardware components, basically provides the benefits of allowing, say, a Windows and a Linux VM to run side by side on the same infrastructure even though those two OSs do not have any common kernel between them. Secondly, and probably similar to the first point, a container built on an image that's been compiled with a modern kernel may not be compatible to run on a host with a much older kernel, or vice versa. So again, if the kernel can't be shared because of an incompatibility, then VMs can be used. So just to be clear, with VMs, you're basically taking a resource hit to be able to run multiple kernels. Now let's look at some other differences. Containers are lightweight and agile, both at runtime and in distribution. So containers leverage much of the host's core OS features without bundling their own entire OS like VMs do. Also, and this is key for portability, containers don't overreach into bundling hardware of any sort like VMs can with things like virtual NICs. At runtime, it's basically up to that container engine to sort that sort of stuff out. In regards to standards, containers have the Open Container Initiative, or OCI for short, which I'll talk about more in the next video. But either way, it's doing a great job with developing standards for containers, something in my opinion that VMs have always struggled with. VMs have many different standards, so even a simple task like exporting a VM from one environment to another can be a real pain, especially if the VM has to be converted and then tweaked to get the bundled virtual hardware to interface with the new environment. OCI has developed standards that have led to relative simplicity when deploying containers to different container engines. It's not really a big deal if you're deploying to an ad hoc host running on running Docker or Podman, or even a, a Kubernetes node or an OpenShift node, uh, or even leveraging modern container-based cloud solutions like uh, IBM containers or AWS Fargate, or even Google Cloud Platform's Cloud Run. This standardization makes containers far more compatible and flexible than VMs, in my opinion. In terms of security, the landscape's always changing. VMs are considered very secure, and that's mostly to do with the hardware virtualization. With containers, you really only want to ever be running trusted code. There's still concerns with running untrusted code in containers, because they aren't really 100% sandboxed. There is the possibility of something called container escape, where code can actually be executed in the context of the host. But what I can say for containers is that there's many security related container initiatives active out there with a heavy focus on improving container security. You can do a quick search for something like Gvisor or Kata containers, which in regard to Kata containers, and I guess this might make things a little bit more confusing, 
but it actually uses hardware virtualization too, where containers run in their own VMs so that you get the best of both worlds. Finally, again, in my opinion, Unlike VMs, containers work really well with modern software development practices. The benefits that come with containers that I demoed in the previous video are very favorable to agile ways of working. Self-containment, lightweight, immutability, they all make testing and delivery easier and more stable, streamlined, and predictable. VMs just don't really lend themselves to being treated in the same way as containers. So whilst I'm sure someone's out there doing it, uh, I think it's probably safe to say it's less common for entire VMs to be promoted through, for example, dev, test, and prod. It's usually just the code or an application binary that's promoted through the environments, which can obviously behave differently depending on the configuration of the underlying system in each environment. Okay, so that's it for this video. Told you it'd be a quick one. Hopefully you can join me now in the next video where we're gonna build our own container image and in the process, take a deeper dive into OCI compliant image formats, the union file system, and also look at some container tools like Docker, Dive, and Builder. Thanks again and see you soon.